Hey guys, Herblin here with a brand new episode of Dwarf Fortress uh, that we're going to be playing today. So, you guys remember everything that we've kind of gone through, I hope. Uh, we were digging out the, I guess, the river out front and kind of trying to unflood the basement some more. Uh, which, still, we, we don't know if that's even going to really work, but hey, it, it's something that we're working on. And uh, right now, we've also got another project going on, which is this prison, which is taking up a lot of our time. Um, I've assigned a couple dwarves by accident outside, kind of smoothing out the mountainside right now, you can see. But uh, mostly they're doing an okay job. They've got, you know, most of the prison cells cleared out already. Uh, that shouldn't take too much longer. I'm not sure what to do with this big empty space here. I guess we'll probably just end up throwing more cells in there or something. Maybe some um, some bigger cells. or We'll do something with it. Uh, I'm just not too sure yet. But we've got the quarters, the captain of the guard set up down here and they're looking really good. Uh, we do need to get him a weapon rack, so I'm not sure, did we ever end up building one? No, we didn't. We had an armor stand. So maybe I'll just assign our uh, metalsmith to do something like that, because he has tons of lead and all this stuff to work with, and I might as well use that up, because I can't imagine myself using lead for a lot else. Uh, so where is that? Let's make a couple of armor stands up, and a couple of weapon racks up right down here. Let's get those built, and uh, that'll be really cool. That'll be really useful to have anyways. So we've got all these extra things uh, laying in here. I'm not sure if these guys are all geared up. Uh, we've got the bars of metal. No, they're not. Um, something I did really quick off camera, um, just when I was looking at it, was just assign the captain of the guard to a new military squad. Um, wasn't actually playing off camera, just seeing it. Realized, hey, I should uh, assign him a, a military so eventually I can get on that. Once I've got some more idlers, idlers to draft up. So let's give this guy a, a uh, give these guys some shields. Yeah, we've got lots of nice iron shields laying around them. They should go to use, right? So, I mean, these guys are our cannon fodder, but hey, we want them to last as long as possible. So they do that much extra weakening to the enemy that they're going after. It's kind of awful, but it's true, right? We don't want them to die right away. We want them to die after they've done all the damage that they can possibly do. Uh, we're going to want to get these guys armored up. We're going to want to gear them and provision them properly. But right now, I really... My main focus is getting them trained up. If Now I could give them armor and they're going to train up in armor and they're going to get better and better with armor. Uh, but I want them to kind of focus on dodging, which I'm sure they'll do right now. And I really want them to get proficient with their weapons and their shields. Because those are the most important things that they can get, bad, get good with. Uh, as well as their overall fighting skill too, right? So what's going on down here? These guys are clearing out. It looks like almost all the work's been done. Uh, we just need a couple of guys to haul some of the rock up to the top. And I'm going to set up a big stone pile. I know we've already got one, but I'm just going to set up a new big stone pile out here. So that uh, we can get some guys working on that. And clearing out this little basement area. Because it's, it's kind of overwhelming me, the fact that we've got uh, so much rock and so much debris kind of laying around. Even down here, like even just outside of our new... Uh, new dining hall we have so much of it it's really weird um, and then I want to build a new hall of artifacts over here somebody uh, somebody suggested that in the comments Ryukon um, had a suggestion where we build a big hall of artifacts and kind of just place it right uh, right somewhere where the dwarves can hang out and I, I'm I know it, it's kind of lame it's kind of like our uh, kind of might look a bit like our throne room but I want to kind of do a little bit of a circle room and we'll fill that up with statues and we'll put in the artifacts in there and everything and we'll fill that up it's gonna be this gonna look really cool I think and we'll have to see it's gonna be a little museum off to the side and we'll fill it up with some glorious statues and we'll get it uh, hopefully get our artifacts dumped in there because we've got quite the collection going on though two of them the the jade cabinet the pink jade cabinet is in the uh, the royal quarters in the living room and uh, sorry the living raven a copper door I was thinking living room door um, but yeah, the, the door is actually on our throne room, right here. And then the other old copper door, they just left on the ground for everybody to look at. And this was the copper door with Jasper Opals and Skunk Bone, and it uh, built right into this place. That's such an amazing throne room. I hope that, uh, that our mayor, yeah, our mayor calls it an opulent throne room. He has a grand bedroom, a grand dining room, and uh, he, she, he seems really happy. So he's got a mandate of making earrings. Set up. I don't know if that's something that we need to do. Um, you know, maybe we'll set that up. We'll set up some uh, bone earrings getting made. Maybe that'll make them happy. I don't know if that's something we have to do or if the dwarves will do it on their own. Uh, 
but let's just set up a couple of them. We got lots of bone to work with, anyways. Um, use up a little bit more wood, make some more crossbows for a rainy day. This guy is going ahead with the uh, the armor stands, and then he'll build the weapon racks, I guess, after. But I think it was the armor stands that we needed, wasn't it? Yeah. So let's just place one right down here, right in the corner. So now he's got a lead armor stand coming in and a lead weapon rack. And that lead weapon rack is finally crafted too. And that's gonna give him a bit of a bonus. How are we doing on cabinets? There we go. Awesome, willow cabinets. Throw one of them in there for him. You know, if we have lots of these cabinets, we could just, I guess we could just start throwing them in bedrooms too. I, I don't see a problem with that. I don't, I don't think so. Maybe there will be, but we'll find out. Let's just place these, uh, kind of in some of these bedrooms here. Should make some people. Oh, it looks like I was already doing that, I guess. So, yeah, let's get these guys suited up with a little bit more gear. Somewhere to place their equipment at the end of the day. I think they're gonna, they'll store, like, clothes and kind of random stuff like that in their bedrooms, which will make it a little bit nicer for them. Improve their quality of life quite a bit. Uh, smooth this uh, little room out. So yeah, we want that, uh, if we're going to make a nice little museum room, we want that to be smoothed out. I know it's not very open. Maybe I should make that a little bit bigger. But I don't know. Closed in is kind of cool too. And then we can put a door over here going somewhere. Maybe this could even just be a little statue room or something. And we'll end up making a, a bigger, better hall for them later. I don't, I don't know. I don't really know yet. I mean, we can always change things later and repurpose everything. It's not that big of a deal right now. Nothing's set in stone except for... No, even the bridge isn't set in stone. It's set in iron. So that's that's really cool. That's still there and it's still covered in vomit. And you remember we cleared out this uh, this moat. It's all muddy down here because of the water that leaked down here over, over time. It's created a muddy atmosphere. I mean, what other game would do that, right? You've got a big pile of mud, a dusting of mud, and um, little bits of frozen ice still kind of hanging on down here. She got some clothes. Somebody lost their pants down there, it looks like. That's funny. Moo is doing such a good job in the kitchen. I really don't want to remove him. He was going to be a farmer at first, but he's doing so good in the kitchen, I can't imagine ever wanting to remove that guy. Uh, it's just way too valuable. Way too valuable. He's become indispensable in the kitchen. Keeps everybody super happy. <laughs> uh, what can we do with all our... Let's make a couple quivers. We got a lot of uh, a lot of leather, I think, laying around from all our butchery. At least we should. We should have, and we if we don't, then we've made a mistake somewhere and not set up a tannery. But I think we did. I think we set up a tannery somewhere out front here. I'd have to really look into it. I'm sure there's a better way to find out if I did, but uh, that's just my weird little way of doing it. The hard way. Ah, uh, sure, we've got a wood furnace, a leather works, and a carpenter's workshop. Oh, the tanner shop is right up here. So these guys are probably... Yeah, they've got quite a lot of leather in there. Ibex leather, skunk leather. Ooh, uh, wild boar leather, skunk leather, kangaroo leather. Kangaroo leather jacket. I'm sure that would be a luxury item somewhere in the world. That guy's run out of ammunition. I don't... We should be good. Yeah, we've got lots of ammunition. I guess he's just run out... And when I say that, I mean there's a little notification down here at the bottom. Cog, he's run out of ammunition, and I guess uh, that just means that he's run out while he's on his hunting trip. And he's got to return back to base to pick up more. How are these tunnels doing? Weird. Very weird. So there's still flowing water down here. That's creepy. And then it uh, looks like it's still filling up, or there's little waves, or ripples in the water still so these rooms this room isn't entirely underwater it's still got a little bit of a uh, little bit of water that can still fill up inside it we'll take a look at that later and see how that comes once the water once the uh, water outside unfreezes we're going to try to drain that and that's going to be a big project on its own uh, speaking of big projects like that we should almost start getting ready for it and uh, by getting ready for it i want to have let's use up some of that lead and I can't think of a better use for it uh, than just kind of making some of these junk items with it. But I want to set up a couple of... I think it's grates that we need. Is it grates? I think it's grates. It'll let water through, but it'll stop people from... Or, like, enemies that are attacking us from crawling through. And we can put those on these uh, little water tunnels. Like what we were creating before. If I could ever find them. 
Uh, but hey, it looks like our prison's almost done. One level down here. Uh, I think, yeah, we've got chains that we can put down, right? Uh, if I can only find those, it's going to be cages and chains or something just on the right side here. Let me look for that. There we go. It was under restraint. Uh, that took longer than I want to admit, so I might <laughs> edit that up a little bit. Uh, so let's throw in some of these iron chains here. It's restraint under V. Got to remember that one. We've got lots of iron chains to use up. I think we've got a couple of lead ones too. Yeah, a couple of lead chains and uh, I don't want to use the pigtail rope. I want to keep with the uh, metal chains when it comes to these doors. And I guess we'll... We should craft up some lead doors. I know that we could throw wooden doors on these dungeon cells, but it, it seems way cooler to actually just make them. I don't think we actually have to, but just for the imagination purposes, I'd like to throw in lead doors. Because what kind of prison has uh, little weird wooden doors on it? I would just imagine somebody kicking them down or breaking them down. But, uh, you know, wooden doors would probably be quite sturdy, though, if they're made by dwarves. Made by fine dwarven carpenters out of hard wood. Not the press wood, uh, like the press board or particle board that we use in the real world today. So these bedrooms are looking really nice. A lot of them have been claimed. Uh, a couple of them we haven't even set as bedrooms. But we can set them up and keep them free and open for people. Um, and then we'll start seeing people move into them. We'll see dwarves kind of coming in. Um, and then maybe after this set of rooms we should start making... A little bit bigger bedrooms for everybody. Again, morale is a big deal in this game. Morale is super important. And uh, I know a lot of you that are watching this have played this game before. But for those of you that haven't, uh, there's these tantrum spirals. And I've mentioned them a couple times before. And dwarves will just rapidly cycle out of control. One dwarf will get upset. You know, he'll kick another dwarf. And that dwarf will go into a... He'll have a freak out and he'll punch three more dwarves. Not actually necessarily punch them but freak out in front of them and just drastically drastically reduce the morale of the fortress <laughs> and it, it gets out of hand really quickly in this game really quickly uh, so that's something you always want to keep in mind when you're when you're designing a fortress is just to keep morale at an absolute as high as possible because at the end of the day you are going to die you are going to lose at this game something will happen a necromancer will come by and raise the dead and it'll be this endless horde of uh, dead things trying to get into your fort or uh, like a wear camel will come and just take you by surprise or something awful will happen at some point but you want to prolong that as long as possible you want to prolong the fun in this game and keep it going keep it going um like this area this has been a lot of fun this has been a prolonged area of fun this little water section of the base um completely underwater but I mean that was a lot of fun that was one of my favorite uh, episodes so far is when this whole thing was flooding up with water and that's something that could have killed us if we were all set up down there if we had more dwarves down there and then like a, a siege or something came immediately afterwards that could have been almost an end game thing for us but it wasn't and it wasn't and uh, we got through it and we uh, prolonged the fun a little bit so these guys are training up really nice. We got Fickod, we got Morny in here, one of our uh, new dwarves. Somebody requested a, uh, a dwarf, and that's Morny. So there you are, Morny, if you're watching. Got you here. I learned about wrestling. That was very satisfying. Feel satisfied about learning wrestling within the last season. He felt pleasure after a sparring session. He felt satisfied about improving discipline, and he felt satisfied after teaching striking. So he's teaching a bit of striking. That's pretty cool. And that's a, uh, a mace dwarf that I probably ended up giving a spear to. Kind of silly. Uh, so this guy, here's Aben. We've got Momas and Asma. We've got quite a, got a few guys down here training right now. I'm not sure where Ryukon is. Uh, but I'm sure he'll pop up again. Somewhere training or somewhere getting ready to train or something. Who knows. We've got our secondary force being haunted by ghosts like crazy. We really got to get that under control too. There is a lot, a lot of things that we need to do in this game. Let's clear out. Let's remove some of these ramps, these stairways. And then I think we can sort of start working on, uh, I want to build another, almost like a proper burial area over here. Maybe like a little tome, tomb or something, like a graveyard. Uh, that'd be really cool to set up. Just over here in the mountainside, a little bit away from our base. 
pretty much going to end up being another mass grave. I'm almost certain of it. Um, but we'll, we'll try to make something nice. We'll try our best to make it respectable. What's this guy doing? He's working on leg grates. And we should have lots. I think we have lots of lead. And I think we have lots of different types of bars. We've got lots of iron. Lead and iron. Lots of iron. Lots of pig iron. Some steel. I don't want to waste steel on some of these projects. But uh, you know what? Maybe I'll make uh, six iron doors as well. And we'll throw those down in the dungeon. Once somebody's ready to, to build them. That's three. That's a good start. And then we'll start uh, setting those up as, as prison cells. I don't know if it's a good idea to... Hmm. Whoops. What did I just do there? Somebody became a spear master. Hmm. I'm not sure if it's a good idea to make these into, into cells quite yet without a door. But uh, I'm going to do one just in case. Just in case something comes up that needs to be done. And we should set up a kennel as well somewhere set up some uh, kennels and start training up war dogs or training up some kind of war animals and uh, have them come out with the uh, with the cannon fodder division that we've that we've assigned that would be pretty awesome get them with a bunch of attack dogs or attack uh, whatever attack kangaroos war ca war camels I don't know something got lots of animals out front and uh, what do we even have out here we've got lots of weird it looks like puppies or something. Cav pups. I'm not sure what a cav is. A small rodent with no tail. Why? Why are we? Why do we have so many of these things? I guess we've been breeding them or something. Like they've been just living here and breeding. Let's slaughter one. See what happens. We could also geld them and try to stop them from breeding in the future. But uh, they they may be a significant source of food. Who knows. Let's just butcher a couple up and see what happens. I think we're good on food, to be honest, but uh, let's just see what comes out of it, if anything comes out of it. And we've got so much uh, meat, so many plants, so much seeds, lots of drink, and other. I'm not sure what other accounts for. Maybe that's prepared meals? Because we do have a lot of prepared meals, and some of them are very good quality. You know, I might even stop easy meals from getting made and just set up... I'm going to put, that's hopefully going to be Moo, and he's going to start working on some fine meals, because that guy is a pro chef. And that's also going to boost up a lot of morale. Did we end up getting another copper table? Oh, we did. I guess somebody's just uh, taking their time hauling it. Oh, and suspended. Let's, can we reinvent that? Can we set that up again? No, we can't. Weird. Can we just, maybe we just have to replace it. Since there's a building present. What the hell? That's really something. I'm having a hard time putting a table down. That might be a bug. That might be a bug. Uh, I'll go back to that later. I'll get back on that. So this guy just ran out of lead. I'm just going to have him do doors for a minute. <laughs> get a couple of those iron doors that we were talking about made up there we go six iron doors and then we'll go put them on the uh put them back on an iron kick and get them making a few more of those those grates because we're gonna need them we're gonna need them and if he can get those made up before winter's over then we can begin our projects a little bit quicker so we're not uh seeing the ice melt and then waiting and trying to get everything sorted out long after Oh, another thing that I realized, during the winter we must be kind of strapped for food because a lot of our food I think came from fishing before. We were doing a lot of our, uh, that's a dead elf there, we were doing a lot of our produce and a lot of our food coming from the fishing industry I think. So that's a, that's an industry that just dries up completely in the winter around here. Maybe we could end up making a little carp farm, like maybe draining water kind of like this at some point once I learn a little bit more about water. And uh, setting up an indoor fishing area, somewhere where we can herd fish in during the summer months and the, the spring and the fall and whenever, you know, whenever the water isn't really frozen over like that. And uh, just having like a bunch of fish kind of kept down there in reserve that we can fish out of once in a while. That'd be really cool. We could set up all these fisheries around it. Oh my god, the ideas are exploding in my head. We could set up a bunch of fisheries around it and then uh, kind of streamline the process and stop fishing out of the river like a bunch of savages. 
because so many times we're fishing out of the river and something comes up along here. It's right on our border. Some kind of weird animal comes up and just murders all our fishers. So maybe that would be kind of the way to do it in a nice protected indoor space in our haunted fort. I see these ghosts just floating around and what is up with these guys hanging out all day in the one, uh, just the one armory they seem to like haunting. They really seem to like haunting that. So let's clear out a new mass grave. AKA home, tomb, whatever. There, that should be good. We'll throw in some statues, put a nice, uh, nice little bit of decoration into it and try to get those guys happy. But it, you know, it really could be somebody from down here that's haunting because their bodies are, I mean, we've got a bunch of, we've got a basement full of bloated, rotting, drowned, frozen corpses, right? Oh good, it's New Year's. We've got a couple minutes to save. So let's uh, fast forward or skip this and we'll be back after the new year. Okay, there we go. Happy New Year's, everybody. The Dwarven New Year's comes with spring. Unlike the human new year where, uh, like in the Earth New Year, I should say the human new year, the Earth's new year, uh, where we celebrate that uh, January, right? The start of January and of December and we're still in the middle of winter. The Dwarves celebrate it at the end of the season and uh, spring starts. So every new year starts with warmer weather coming in. So we are going to have a bit of a, hopefully this is going to start drying, or start uh, melting up, not drying up, melting. And we can test our new, our new system here and see if this is really going to be enough for us. I hope I didn't uh, mess anything up too bad and I really want this to work. It would be so cool if we could drain that area once and for good, once and for all and get that, uh, get that really, get that project started at least. So yeah, why not, right? This area is going to come flooding out soon, and that should be... That's all it's going to really need, is this ice to melt, and all this water is going to slowly pour out. But we've got to be the ones... Uh, once that pours out, we got to put a floodgate here before we start anything more, before we reflood it. Because then we can open and close that at will. And that way we can flood that level if we ever want to. I know that kind of seems silly, we shouldn't want to flood that level. But we might be being attacked someday. Maybe something's uh, murdering us and killing everything. And it's coming from the depths of the mine. And the only way to shut it off is to, uh, to flood that level and it can't get up to us that way. And we trap it in the mines. That would be that would be one scenario. I mean, there's many. It's Dwarf Fortress, right? Come on. There's lots of reasons it might happen. It'd be a good idea. So who do we have that doesn't have any jobs right now? We've got... seem to have a lot of idlers. Yeah, we've got all these guys idling. Do they have... Uh, they don't have plant gathering. Hmm. Some engravers. Engravers and miners. That's the thing. I've I've stopped uh whoops, there we go. I guess I've stopped some uh stopped all those engraving jobs and all those mining jobs. I don't know why. We we've got lots that we can do. We've always got lots that we can do. Um let's start by let's clear out this area. Let's just make this into a big room for now. Maybe we'll do more with it later, but let's just have miners come down, make that into a big room. And let's have our uh, engravers and stone detailers come in here, start smoothing this area out. And if we have any engravers left, we could always have more things carved into the walls. I don't know if you noticed, but I actually engraved into the walls of uh, all the prison cells to try to improve improve the uh, imprisoned future to be imprisoned dwarves' moods. Let's throw a couple iron. Oh, we got a lead door. What else do we got? Iron doors. Yeah, we got iron doors ready. There we go. Let's throw those on these rooms and uh, we've got a couple jail cells at, at that point. And we can also assign each of these to be uh, jail cells to be used by the justice. Which I think just means the uh, the hammer or the, uh, the, ch the captain of the guard rather. Set these to be used by justice. Assign these rooms. Yeah. Those three should be good for now. Maybe we'll end up wanting to use the other ones temporarily as a kennel or something at some point. Uh, probably not, but you never know, right? So that cleared up some of our some of our idlers, getting everybody bit busy doing something a little bit more important than hanging around. This guy's still doing cabinets. Man, I gotta remember to go back to these guys because I put them on uh, permanent things and then I kind of forget about them. And that guy's been making cabinets for like the whole time today that I've been uh, playing this. This guy's making wooden doors. You know, we can always use more doors. How's he done? 
Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot of wooden doors. I know I just literally said that uh, we could always use more wooden doors, but I don't think we can at this time. <laughs> Let's do a couple bins and... You know what we can always use more of? I say that now, but we can always use more caskets. As awful as that is, we can use a lot more caskets because we are going to have a big burial job to be doing. And we don't have any coffins. So uh, that's something that we definitely... We should have been producing those already. I should have uh, already set that up, but I totally slipped my mind, completely messed that up. Oh well. We'll get to it. We'll get it all done. Where's that frozen door for? Was that... Did that open up yet? No, it's still... Ooh, it's still there. So hopefully this breaks soon. I wonder if we mine it, if it'll, if it'll refreeze, if there's enough, uh, if it's cold enough for it to refreeze. I'll have to take a look at that and see, see what happens with that. It'd be nice to get this drainage job going, because that's going to take a long time to drain all the water out of here, especially out of that one little narrow shaft where the water is going to be coming out of. That's going to take ages for that water to drain. I really should set up multiple drainage points, but at the same time, it would be really nice, uh, more secure, much easier to secure and set up and better organized if we had it all coming out of one source. Oh, what happened here? A great horned owl stopped somebody from doing something. Whoa. Axdorf, he canceled his drinking from a great horned owl, has interrupted him. Huh. Strange. Hopefully he's okay. Ooh, when Elven Caravans arrived. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Come on guys, bring your amazing wares over here. And get ready to trade. Don't mind the dead elf sitting in our trade depot. He's fine, he's just got, uh, looks like his foot came off. He's got a partial skeleton, he's kind of mangled, and he's got a old rotting foot sitting in the trade depot. So you guys come on over here, you trade your stuff with me, and uh, no problem, I give you a good discount. We're definitely going to rob those guys. Where is it? Come on, where are they? Oh, there they come. Ooh, so we're gonna have to inspect these guys, see what they've got. So they're setting up, they're setting up in a little market area. They're setting up in a trade depot, literally on top of their their uh, fallen brothers. What's this guy? A mercenary, it looks like. Oh, a merchant. Hmm. Let's pause before I set up the kill orders, or we get a repeat of last time. Let's select from the list. We've got, uh... Hmm. We've got a couple of ghosts. I'm not gonna bother with them. I guess we can attack the ghosts, though. Weird. Okay, we gotta make sure that we get all the elves. Otherwise, they'll... get away. And you don't want elves to get away. Oh, shit. This attack system is not... something I'm super used to. You gotta hold shift while you assign everybody. And I just let go of shift and it means that uh, it resets that list that I'm setting up. So let's take a look. We've got uh, Perry, an elf merchant, uh, Ramu, something elf merchant. Looks like five elf merchants. I'm going to give that order out. And then I'm going to give the, uh, you know, the bars of metal. I'm going to give them the same order. Just, just make sure everybody's out there doing it so it gets done. Each J... Come on. H. H. Happy New Year's, stupid elves. Better get running, buddies. Get running. Oh, they're packing up. They're getting out of here. How do they know I issued that order? Oh, man. I guess these guys are on him. Thank God. He's tearing this guy apart. He's got this guy's foot hurt. He's got him right in the foot with a spear. How's this guy doing? This guy might get away. He's quite a ways ahead, but we are going to get a lot of a lot of their stuff. Oh no, he's got they got him. <laughs> Left hand is gone, right hand is gone. Both hands are gone. What? That is brutal, guys. Why are you uh, cutting that poor guy's hands off? That seems kind of a little bit a little bit of overkill. Just a bit. Did they bring animals with them, I bet? No. No animals. Wow, so I think we, uh, I think we got them. I think we got all those elves. 
I'll have to take a look at uh, some of their stuff. See if they had anything interesting with them. But uh, yeah, we got five Alvin uh, traders. We just managed to murder the hell out of them. And now they have, they've left all their stuff and this is all ours now. Lots of garbage. I mean, elves aren't known for, you know, they're super amazing. The amazing stuff that they bring, but you know, see, date wood palm. Palm wood leggings, like wooden armor. Hey, a cougar in a cage, that's kind of cool. We'll have, to, we'll have to do something with that, because I... That's really cool, actually. A cougar in a cage. In a wooden cage. <laughs> I wouldn't trust it. But we stole a cougar. We got an ocelot in a cage. Uh, lots of wooden stuff. Some berries. Mango wooden cage. Oh, grown mango in a wooden cage. Hmm. Lots of cool stuff. We're going to have to organize that, but that's going to be for another episode. That was fun. Uh, anyways, guys, thank you so much for staying tuned for another episode of Dwarf Fortress. Uh, leave a like, a comment, let me know what you guys are thinking. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, uh, subscribe to it if you're really feeling that uh, so inclined. But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys are thinking and give me some feedback because that means so much to me. Uh, until next time.